Hey guys, welcome to my little corner of heaven. Just a little section of my kitchen, uh, kind of restaurant style. Pretty much got everything that I need pretty much in my face. So uh, anyway, onto the subject of what you see here is this is um, kind of a makeshift do-it-yourself uh, sous vide insulation device. Uh, some of you guys, you know, if you Google it, you'll see sous vide, and maybe this has come up. Uh, some of the containers you can buy, you can buy insulation sleeves. Um, the container that I have that's inside the cooler now is a Lapavi C15 from Amazon that I got, and it doesn't have an insulation sleeve for this size. So I was forced to kind of figure some stuff out. And all this came about um, after I did a Asabuco recipe uh, recommended by Sous Vide Everything. And if you haven't checked that out, you should definitely give those guys a shot. We don't know each other, but I'm pretty, you know, fascinated with what they do. But it's Guga and uh, Ninja and Mamao, and those guys are fantastic. Do they do a lot of cool stuff? So you know, shorter cooks, ribeyes, uh, you know, New York strip filet mignon, tri-tip, picanha. You won't have any issues. But you know, this is a 24-hour cook at 175 degrees, and it was pretty hot. Uh, radiating heat probably not a big deal for most people but like I said this is just something I wanted to see if it work so what I did was is um, you can see the the pan and the lid are already in there with my jewel I got all three of those pieces um, off of the list from Guga's uh, YouTube site uh, listed and you can go to Amazon and purchase those um, I got a cutting board uh, which I got off Amazon uh, which uh, measures uh, 17 and a quarter by 11 and a quarter and then I got a little deep dish pan which they sell at Sam's it's uh, 12 and 5 eighths by 10 and a quarter so with my setup and this Omaha steaks insulated container that my neighbor wanted to throw in the trash but I was like hey this would be great for putting hot food in if I was catering or you know going to the park or something like that crazy right so I kept it I have it over a year and now it's come in handy. So I had this idea, do it yourself. Maybe, uh, you know, I could insulate uh, the, the sous vide a little bit to where there wasn't a bunch of escaping heat. And maybe the, you know, circulator wouldn't run as often. So this is my little shot. So what I did was, is I took this, you know, Omaha Steaks container, uh, which was pretty deep. Um, wouldn't allow really much for the sous vide to stick out above uh, in the circulating air it would kind of have been suffocated down there so what I did was I took the metal pan and I stuck it in the bottom of the container uh, open spot up right so it got a good platform of that then I put the cutting board on top of the metal container to create a base for the Lapavi C15 pot or container or whatever put the lid on and then, of course, did some measuring with the lid and the container. And then now what I'm going to do is, you can see it's kind of fit in there real nice. I uh, cut a little section in the back uh, for the, you know, the cord to go through and then plug in. And so what you see, the probe is actually linked to kind of a wireless, uh, what they call it. It's a Oregon wireless thermometer. I like it only because it tells me like five degrees before everything's done. It gives us a little nice little voice and tells you it's almost done. So it kind of gives me like a, hey, wake up. You need to start paying attention. So what I did was is then I kind of just eyeballed it and measured a little hole uh, where the uh, sous vide is going to stick through uh, the jewel. And then, of course, I had to notch out a little spot because right in the back there you've got, you know, where the electrical plug kind of comes out so what I'm gonna do here is I'm literally just gonna fire it up to 175 degrees and then I've got the probe in there to kind of check to see if the ambient air temperature around it uh, sorry um, around it is pretty similar to the water temperature on the inside plus or minus a degree or two because nothing's ever perfect so what I do have is I have a um, oh, what the hell they call these things uh, yeah, infrared, is that call it right there? Infrared thermometer. So once this kind of heats up and it's at temperature, which the jewel will tell me, 
uh, I will kind of play with the outside temperature um, and the top and bottom and then of course along the and see if it works. Um, concern for me is there's going to be a lot of uh, moisture escaping from the porthole in the lid uh, which could potentially become problematic with the electronics on top of the jewel maybe uh, I'm not really sure so really so an idea so I'm gonna get to it and then I'll post subsequent videos uh, or comments with some ideas and of course you know we'll see where we go from there so anyway nothing life-changing but it could be if it works <laughs>